You can't find a more odious, tyrannical regime than the, the one that exists in Tehran today. And, and the United States has supported tyrannical regimes as well. We have indeed. And and when we did, it generally worked out badly for us. Yes, so time. maybe maybe the wiser policy is to uh, stand back and be a model, a role model, a shining city on the hill for countries that are interested in... Uh, in uh, the welfare of their people, for human beings who are interested in freedom and prosperity to repair to. Well, that's fine. Because this meddling simply hasn't worked. Well, you'd have a hard time convincing Mr. Gorbachev of that. It certainly worked in the case of the Soviet Empire. And we're in a situation where... The the Soviet Empire was an economic basket case that, that imploded of its own dead weight. And in fact... It would have imploded long before had we not sub- subsidized them effectively for a couple of generations. Uh, that may be true. And our subsidizing them for a couple of generations was almost certainly a mistake. But uh, Iran, the, the situation of the Iranian people is not any better than was the situation of the Soviet people in the last years of the Cold War. And our, every dissident that you talk to, without exception, will tell you that American support for that movement was decisive. It wasn't a case where the thing collapsed of its own weight. If it were going to collapse, it would have collapsed sometime from 1923 on. Well, that's so the sort think, of hypothetical that you started our discussion saying you couldn't possibly know. Uh, no, what I was responding to was a question of how the Iranian people would respond if the country were attacked. Mm-hmm. I wasn't talking about a situation like this. Well, I, I, that, I, I, the, that the Iranian people hate this regime is proven by the public opinion polls taken by the regime itself. So, and that shows that upwards of 70% of the Iranian people do not like it and want it gone. Well, I, I have a better solution for you if you're correct about that, then. If you are, if you are concerned, countries in which people prosper... Countries in, in which people are, are doing well economically, central governments and central authorities become relegated to the perimeter. They become less important, less in charge. We have seen this, for example, in China, where the people in the coastal provinces uh, began to prosper, and they really didn't care what the edicts were out of Beijing. I mean, they, they made uh, you know, nice statements about the central government, and they went, on, went ahead and prospered, and they drove an enormous amount of economic growth. If if you would like to see some freedom for the Iranian people and prosperity for the Iranian people, instead of uh, hopelessly entangling the United States in in, uh, in in places in the world, I don't care to be entangled, to tell you the truth, and I don't want my kids getting the blowback from, why don't we just lift all kinds of sanctions and let the people trade and let the people prosper? Well, because... The It'll marginalize the government. <laughs> well... If you had a government in Iran which took the same decisions as Deng Xiaoping did in China and wanted their people to prosper and wanted an open society, uh, then that might very well work, although the China case is still open. I mean, we'll revisit that probably in another 20 years. But certainly, I'm in favor of doing all of that. The problem is that the regime in Iran, which is which has unprecedented oil revenues right now, is spending that money to support terrorist organizations and to attack us. Thousands of Americans have been killed by Iranian-sponsored organizations around the world since 1979. The fact that they hold huge demonstrations in the streets of Iran forcing people to chant death to America uh, all the time tells you something about that regime. It is hostile to us. Iran, 1953. The CIA mounted its first major covert operation to overthrow a foreign government. The target was the Prime Minister of Iran, Mohammad Mossadegh. He held power legitimately through his country's parliamentary process, and he was popular. Washington had once looked to him as the man to prevent a communist takeover. But that was before Mossadegh decided that the Iranian state, not British companies, ought to own and control the oil within Iran's own borders. When he nationalized the British-run oil fields, Washington saw red. The Secretary of State, John Foster Dulles, and his brother Allen, director of the CIA, decided with Eisenhower's approval to overthrow Mossadegh and reinstate the Shah of Iran. 
The mobs paid by the CIA and the police and soldiers bribed by the CIA drove Mossadegh from office. Crown Prince Abdullah greets the Shah as he lands at Baghdad Airport after a seven-hour flight from Rome. The King of Kings was back in control and more pliable than Mossadegh. American oil companies took over almost half of Iran's production. U.S. arms merchants moved in with $18 billion of weapon sales over the next 20 years. But there were losers. Nearly everybody in Iran of any importance has had a brother or a mother or a sister or a son or a father tortured, jailed, uh, uh, deprived of property without due process. I mean, an absolutely buccaneering dictatorship in our name that we supported. Savak was created by the CIA. Savak, the Shah's secret police, tortured and murdered thousands of his opponents. General Richard Secord and Albert Hakim, whom we met earlier, were among those who helped supply the Shah's insatiable appetite for the technology of control. In the after-action report by the CIA on what they had done in Iran in 1953, they said, we're going to get some blowback from this. We then made a puppet out of Saddam Hussein in Iraq, who was a friend of ours. He was an asset in the CIA's computers. We did so because he was anti-Iranian. He was very fearful that the revolution in Iran would spread into his country. He therefore went to war with Iran. The war was extremely bloody, went on throughout the 1980s. Unfortunately for Saddam Hussein, he began to lose the war. At that point, in comes the United States in the form of Donald Rumsfeld, sent to Saddam Hussein by President Reagan to tell him, we will supply you with intelligence, we will supply you with the weapons you may need through covert means. It is why cynics in Washington say, we know Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, we have the receipts. This is what we mean by blowback. It wants our destruction or our domination. It's not just a question of abstractly asking, how can we get better treatment of the Iranian people? How can we get women in Iran to have, have something approaching decent treatment? You know that women in Iran are, are officially evaluated as worth half a man, and that if a pregnant woman with a male fetus gets killed in an automobile accident, the guilty party is charged one full tax for the dead male fetus and one half of that for the dead mother well i mean this is this is sort of a straw man argument if you think you want to corner me into into defending the uh, the 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 government of the ayatollahs because i don't want to do that but i will tell you this that when uh, when some whacked out speechwriter tells the iranian people that they are part of the axis of evil and uh, they see that the um, American government will attack, will bomb, will shock and awe innocent civilians and kill kill tens of thousands of them on the basis of false pretext. Do you think it drives them into the camp of the Ayatollahs, or do you think it makes them want to overthrow their leadership? Well, you see, first of all, I'm not trying to drive you into any corner. I'm, I'm simply tra trying to talk about the nature of the Iranian regime and to suggest to you that your policy of leaving Iran alone will simply produce more dead Americans. We've never threatened Iran with invasion. We've never talked about shock and awe against Iran. I've told people that if you're interested in avoiding World War III, it seems like you ought to be interested in preventing them from having the knowledge necessary to make a nuclear weapon. And I take, this, I take the threat of Iran with a nuclear weapon very seriously. No American official, contrary to what you said a bit earlier, has ever advocated such a policy, or if they have, I'm certainly not aware of it. What you've got to go on, what your theory that we're preparing to attack Iran is based on newspaper articles which made predictions which did not come to pass. I mean, the fact of the matter, the indisputable fact, is that Iran has been killing Americans ever since 1979, and no American president has ever responded forcefully to that. So why anybody should believe that that's going to happen now is beyond me. I think it's nuts. Um, I, I need to ask you before we run out of time uh, about uh, your experience with uh, Italian intelligence. I know you've answered it in other forums, but your name comes up over and over again with respect to uh, Italian intelligence and forged documents that uh, were, were complicit in selling the Americans on uh, misrepresentations about Iraq. 